This week on CrossFeed's 100th episode, Google versus Baby, David versus Mecca Goliath, female pastors versus Lifeway Christian bookstores, Christians versus rock and roll. How young is too young to marry? And welcome to episode 100 of CrossFeed Religious News. I am Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I am Pastor Jim Butler, out in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, serving St. Luke's Lutheran Church. Welcome to our 100th episode, where we reveal all sorts of secrets and tie up all sorts of long subplots <laughs> that have been going on here for so long, and an extra long issue. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's comic books, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's the problem. We never really had a plot to begin with, so uh, <laughs> it's really nothing to tie up. We're just not that complex. Well, you know, usually, you know, comics is a you know extra link, double sized issue, you know, jam, a whole bunch of artists involved, and uh, yeah, if you tell people double size, you know, under the uh, <laughs> episode is extra long, and you know, they type plots, subplot lines, and start a new ones. So yeah, you tell people it's extra <laughs> long, and they'll stop watching now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> extra short, extra short. There you go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is our hundredth episode. Um, this was Dale's idea, by the way, to have this this thing. Dale was doing a podcast before. Yep. And, and uh, it was called Lutheran Weekly, and uh, it was uh, it was interviews mostly with uh, different people, missionaries, and uh, uh, a comic book artist, and uh, it interviewed Jim actually, um, mm-hmm. talking about uh, distance education. Uh, for pastors and and just all kinds of stuff. That podcast still has almost as many subscribers as we do, even though I haven't done an episode in a couple of years and said, all right, I'm not doing this anymore. And I stopped that one just because I had a hard time lining up uh, interviews. I think the problem was that at the time, podcasting was still pretty new. And people are going, what's a podcast? What do you, you know, what, what are you talking about? What is this? And, um, so I stopped doing that and uh, and came up with the CrossFeed idea. Uh, originally, it was just a portion of uh, lcmspastor.com, which is a website that I run. And then it just, um, decided to kind of give it a life of its own, uh, distinct from that, to let people know that this isn't just for Missouri Synod Lutheran pastors. It's for anybody. And, uh, and we certainly don't just cover uh, Missouri Synod Lutheran news. So, um, decided to, you know, get the, the domain and, and, uh, we started up the podcast. When we first started it up, we were on dial up or I was anyway. And so it was audio only the, and man, I, I just listened to some of our old episodes and the audio was horrible. I mean, you know, we've had problems since then, but man, we've come a long ways, um, at least audio quality wise. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, yeah, then, uh, a couple years ago when I got broadband, we, uh, added video for a while. We had uh, Bible studies accompanying the, um, mm-hmm. the episodes and I didn't really get any feedback from it. We used them for a while at our church and, um, got, you know, pretty good feedback on that one. But, um, you know, we did it for a while and, decided to do something different. And, um, since as far as I knew, nobody else was using them, I stopped making them. But, um, so actually if you go through, we don't actually have a hundred episodes, even if you look at the audio, because there were some weeks that I was doing the Bible study, but, um, and so there was a, a number whatever for that week, but we didn't have a chance to, for various reasons to do an actual podcast episode. So, so we don't actually have a hundred episodes, but, and then, you know, there were, when we weren't doing the Bible study, there were times where, uh, where we'd go a couple weeks. So it's not a hundred weeks either, but, um, but this is episode 100. 
and so we thought it's worth celebrating a little bit. And, and now you know the history that you never wanted to know. And and you know, that, 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 <laughs> if you don't understand the things with the number, just think government. <laughs> We don't know what's coming in. We don't know what's going out. Just, just guessing. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, I think that a lot of um, a lot of our our listeners and viewers are people that have been with us since the beginning. You know, our um, you know, it took a little while to kind of build up an audience, but once it was built up, it's been pretty steady. And so, uh, you know, we may gain or lose one or you know, one or two here and there, but uh, since then it's it's been pretty constant. So, which and we yeah, appreciate yeah, both of them very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, we do we do appreciate the two of you out there who listen to us. Um, we actually, once we started uh, submitting it to YouTube and Rever and all those other sites, um, you know, our, our subscriber numbers didn't really increase all that much, but we get a lot of people watching us on those different uh, channels too. So um, I was really happy to be able to, to post it up there. That's another story, cure for insomnia. Anyway, um, so... Uh, where do you want to begin? Oh, we got to begin with 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 Mecha Goliath here. Mecha Mag, Mecha Magna Bible Story. Uh, manga. Manga. So I got to do my best my best comic book guy you know impression here. Let's see. <laughs> I've heard other people pronounce it manga, so I it's it's, it's pronounced it. manga, you noob. <laughs> okay. Hey, for what it's worth, I mean, you know, I. I probably have more comic books than you do, so you know. Probably. But I've never probably. been into uh, 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 the Japanese manga. Never, never got into it. Uh, uh, also, well, some anime. I, mean, I, I used to watch Speed Racer. You know, I, I just watched that. I watched the movie last night. Kind of weird watching live action anime, but hey, they pulled it off. Anyway, yeah. this is this is so cool. I really got a kick out of this. Um, you know, uh, Goliath being a, a giant robot, um, and uh, from JMG Comics, and um, they decided to do uh, um, um, a new way of uh, telling Bible stories, and that is by Mecha Manga. And um, don't be too proud of this technological terror. You know, and it's really interesting because they're really kind of trying to tell the whole story of, of some of these things. Um, for example, he says, uh, you know, how many people realize David's brother was there, didn't even want him to get to, to do it? How many people, um, you know, knew that uh, David related his exploits of protecting sheep under his guard to commit Saul to let him go, go battle the giant? <laughs> how many of them, you know... Created, knew he cut off Goliath's head and prayed it around with it, you know, and showed off, you know, gee, I'm the thing. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, my my favorite thing in this thing was saying, best of all, since we're being faithful to the biblical text, we're able to include David's last bit of dialogue, which references his lineage, the same genealogical line as Jesus. That's that's cool, but I'm I'm thinking, okay, if you're gonna retell this story. And he's going to refer to his, his lineage and connecting it with Jesus. It gets a little bit complicated because then you sort of start picturing uh, the the whole New Testament, you know, and, and sort of sci-fi Jesus. Do you ever see that Christmas special? Well, was, I'd have to say it was, it was even more of an epiphany special where the three wise men are from outer space. No, but I've read comic books like that. So... I, re I remember from when I was a well, kid. It's a Justice League comic book. I think got number 150, if I'm not mistaken. It's a special Christmas issue. So, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of picturing that here. See, the idea here is that they can take, um, they, they can have him parading around this head. And since it's a robot head, it's not this gruesome, gory thing. And uh, because they want this geared for all ages, they want six and up. And so it's not just a kid's thing. This is for kids. This is for adults. It's for everybody. And um, so I, 
this looks really cool. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and, and um, uh, the other thing I really like is, uh, you know, right on the first page of our debut issue, we include the message. If you think this comic book is exciting, check out the real story in the Holy Bible. You'll find it in First Samuel 17, verses 1 to 58. You know, uh, uh, you know, we wanted to know that our book is not a substitute for the Bible in any way. Yeah. Yeah. And see, so this is a, you know, obviously this is a Christian organization and they want to present the Bible in a fresh new way, you know. And now some people are offended by it um, because they think, well, this is not being this is being irreverent and and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, that you shouldn't mess with it. But, you know, I, I thought about this. I'm like, this is like, you know, when the Veggie Tales, um do Bible stories. You know, yeah. It, okay, it wasn't giant robots. It also wasn't talking vegetables. You know, but the point is, is they're just they're presenting the story and you know, and and just just giving it a, a fresh face and and just trying to raise interest, give people you know a new awareness of the story. But you know, they're definitely saying, look, the original story that's the real one. You know, that's the real thing, and and um and. For instance, they also make a point of, of like, okay, Goliath is a giant robot, but all the Philistines are robots, all right? So it's not just like they, like, create him or something like that as as their champion. All the Philistines are robots, and the Philistines show up in several stories, so they're going to be kind of a returning villain throughout uh, the series, which they're hoping to be a quarterly series. I'd like to see it more see, often. I, I think the idea was really cool. I mean, you know... I'm big into communication. How do you communicate the Bible in a new and fresh way? You know, especially, again, people have heard these Bible stories over and over and over again. How do you communicate with them? How do you connect with them? Or somebody, like a kid who may not even read the Bible, you know, may not, you know, may not ever want to look at it. And gee, you know, seeing uh, Mecca Goliath there with David and his outfit, his, his space armor, they may pick it up and just be interested and start reading and going through going, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, and can make some, some connections here that may not be made otherwise. Now, so I think they're really you know, a neat idea. I do have one concern, and this is something that's pretty common with this kind of stuff. Um, and that is, th now they ask him, okay, are you going to do just Bible stories? or Because this is an interview. And they said, are you going to do just Bible stories? You're going to do like morality play kind of stuff too. You know, like Veggie Tales, they do a lot of morality play kind of stuff. And uh, it's not all just, you know, rehashing Bible stories. And uh, they said, well, with this particular series, it's just going to be all Bible stories. But, um, you know, at the same time, there's going to be, you know, we're, th we're looking at some other series that will be um, more of a morality play. And, um, and, and uh, you know, obviously there's, there are moral lessons, you know, in these stories. But one thing that I didn't hear that I would have really liked to have heard is that, you know, the, the story, for instance, of David and Goliath is not just about if you have faith, you can accomplish great things. All right. The real story is that God is the one who saves, you know, and and that he's the one that God sends unlikely people to save. And, but it is God saving through that person. And which ultimately points us to Jesus, who's, you know, seems like about the most unlikely guy you'd ever think of to be the Son of God, you know, to be God in the flesh. And yet he's the one that saved us. And so, you know, if they're, if, if they're sort of missing that point, now, if they're just retelling the story and they, you know, and they don't sort of go off on a preaching tangent, you're not going to hit that point any more than you're going to hit the point that it's all about faith, you know, and it all depends on how they do the dialogue. Now from the, um, on the, in the article, there are, uh, pictures of some of the pages and it looks like they're, they're just sticking with the text, you know? So I could totally see using these things with like, uh, um, like, like parents with your kids, you know, and then having them read it and talking about it with them. You know, and enjoying it as a family, um, or even like uh, you could. I mean, you could even use something like this 
uh, depending on the kids, even with like a Sunday school class or something like that, you know, that you could do this and then look at the real story and compare them and, you know, and talk about it and stuff. And, um, you know, where, where you'd have a chance to, to explain, you know, how we see Jesus in these things. So. <clears throat> but, you know, if they stick with the text, I think they're, you know, they're, I mean, you don't need to, I don't even need to preach if you just to the text. I mean, you just have David and that, that beautiful thing saying, yeah, you come at me with spear and uh, 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 javelin, but I come at you in the name of the Lord our God, and I will kill you, and I will cut off your head, and you will know there is a God in Israel. You know, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's all. That's all it takes down to it. So, but I'm I was really glad to see Newsarama pick that up. Uh, yeah. it's a great comic site. If you like comics, uh, Newsarama dot com is one of the best out there. And they do a lot of good tele sci fi television stuff too. Oh, but let's go from one thing, a comic that they hope to put in Christian bookstores to a magazine that they ban from some Christian bookstores. Sort of. It's not completely banned. No. Uh, so, this is Gospel Today magazine, and it has been around for about 20 years. And the uh, most recent issue, it's published by monthly uh, the most recent issue... They have five female pastors, all dressed in black. And the um, Lifeway Christian Bookstores, which uh, are owned and operated by the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, was very offended by this, very upset with it. And so had them all pulled off the shelves and then stuck behind the counter. And the interesting thing to me was they didn't even tell the publishers of Gospel Today they were going to do this. They just up and did it. And uh, they found out uh, when somebody called them and, and let them know, saying, hey, you know what, uh, you know, the Southern Baptist did you magazine. So um, now Dale and I from the Missouri Synod, we, uh, our, our belief generally is that um, women should not be pastors. Um, however, I would have a real problem with somebody pulling a magazine down because – they disagreed, you know, with 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 the content. Uh, a few years ago, we had a uh, a Lutheran Hour was pulled off of um, WMBI, owned by the Moody Bible Institute, because it, they they spoke in one uh, uh, thing about Christian about uh, infant baptism and that baptism saves, and up oh, can't have that. So, um, and. Uh, but let's get you some of your comments, Dale, and then I'll get into something else here, too, about the nature of being Baptist anyway. Go ahead. Okay. Now, this is kind of a, a little bit um strange thing because these stores, you know, like, for instance, in the Missouri Center, uh, Concordia, or Concordia Publishing House, which is our uh, publishing arm, they have, you go to St. Louis, Missouri, and you'll find the Concordia uh, bookstore. And you go in there, and they don't just have stuff published by CPH. But I'm pretty sure most of it runs through uh, um, some sort of doctrinal review before it gets sold at the store. Okay. It does. All right. So, you know, if you're a Missouri Synod Lutheran, you can walk in there, and and everything you find in there, uh, except maybe the precious moment stuff, <laughs> Is all, you know, good solid Lutheran doctrine, even if it's not coming from a Lutheran source. Okay. And in fact, in their catalog, they also sell stuff published. They distribute um, uh, materials published by other companies that have gone through the doctrinal review process. All right. But they only sell that stuff. Okay. Now, these Lifeway stores, they sell all kinds of stuff. And it's kind of odd that. While they sell plenty of other stuff that I'm sure has stuff that they would disagree with or that the Southern Baptist Convention would, you know, would, that it would go against their teachings on, on one level or another. Um, this particular thing is the thing that, that really grabbed them. Now, it's obvious, all right? There's this thing with, with these five, you know, women pastors, okay? And, and so it's, it's sort of an in your face thing. Um, I think that the reaction that, you know, they're saying the, 
uh, publisher said, well, they basically treated it like pornography and put it behind the counter. Unless a person goes in the store and asks for it, you know, they won't see it displayed. And I was thinking, well, that's not, you know, usually that, that stuff's just on the top shelf, you know, when I walk into a um, convenience store or something like that, you know, um, it's not hidden behind the counter. Um, but, um, you know, I, I understand what she's saying. I, I'm big on, um, if you're going to take a stand about something, be vocal about it. And, uh, you know, if you disagree with something that somebody's doing, tell them and don't just, don't just hide it. And so while if they wanted to do that, fine, um, I think they should be consistent and look at, you know, what else they're selling that goes against their doctrine. Um, you know, I'm sure that there's other things in, uh, you know, even in this particular magazine that have gone against their teachings at various times. Um, well, now, when you're dealing with Southern Baptists, though, the very nature of being Baptist means nobody can tell me what to believe. You know, that, that there is nothing between me and God. And uh, therefore, you can have disagreements. I know Southern Baptists who believe women should be ordained. I know, uh, matter of fact, the other article that we, we linked to, uh, the CNN rant, uh, the guy's wife uh, used to teach in Life, Lifeway Christian bookstores and is a female pastor in the Southern Baptist Convention. I mean, you know... Um, you know what you get when you get you put four Baptists together, don't you? Five opinions. You know, I mean, that's that's the nature of being Baptist. No, that's Lutherans. <laughs> you put four, four Lutherans together, there will be a fifth. But uh, uh, but you know, you put four Baptists together, you'll get five five opinions. Um, and that's just you know that's the nature of being Southern Baptist. I used to have a. a uh, there's a black Baptist pastor used to be right next to my last church, and he was dual affil- affiliated. He was affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention, and he was affiliated with um, can't remember the other Baptist Convention. He was affiliated with two of them, and I mean he and uh, he believed women should be ordained. And I said that you know the Southern Baptists don't believe you know the convention objects to that. He says I'm a Baptist. Nobody can tell me what to believe. <laughs> But, you know, the Southern Baptist Convention, especially, um, more so than any other, it seems like, uh, you know, they come out with doctrinal statements all the time. But none of them are binding. And there is that more moderate group running through the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, but, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, the, the Charles Stanleys and, and the Criswells and those guys have, have a lot of power and, and they kind of really, you know, kind of dominate. But, the, you know, the very nature of being Baptist is no creed but the Bible. Nobody can tell me what to believe. And no doctrinal statement is considered binding on anyone. Hmm. So, uh, so the, so, so I just kind of thought the very nature of being Baptist, Southern Baptist, uh, this, um, struck me kind of funny that, you know, oh, well, that's how we're going to draw a line here. Because they also do allow women, uh, to study in the MDiv program with their seminaries. Hmm. Yeah, see, that's something we don't. We've got women at our seminaries, but they're there for their uh, their masters of uh, was it M A? Yeah, masters of arts and religion, M A R. Okay. And a few of them are there for the M R S, but we won't go that <laughs> that, that route. Uh, yeah, but, ladies, yeah, most great place like to pick up guys. <laughs> yeah. um, but most of them are studying um, to be a deaconess. And they're in the, you know, the seminaries and the deaconess program, which is completely different from when Dale and I went to seminary. I mean, if there was a, a female on the campus and she was one of the staff, uh, I think we had one, one woman who was taking theology courses for her, her MAR when I was at seminary. Yeah, I had one in my class. And, um, and she married one of the guys in my class. <laughs> But now uh, they just, uh, they, you know, they've got, because of the deaconess program, if you know, the seminaries, there's several more. But, uh, you know, again, you know, I mean, if if you're in a church body like ours where there's a very definite 
theological position on things and this very definite uh, uh, and everything has to be in line with it. So we have a, a commission on doctrinal review, which a classmate of mine is now in charge of, to make sure that everything published, you know, coming out of CPH lines up with our doctrine. Um, that's one thing. But when you live in a plur- when you're in a basically a pluralistic church body, I don't understand how in the world you can um, say, "Up oh, this here we can't allow." Okay, but then there's this this as Jim mentioned before rant on CNN um, from uh, Roland Martin, and uh, his wife, as was mentioned, is an ordained uh, Southern Baptist pastor. And um, now, didn't he used to do laugh in? <laughs> Rowan and Martin. <laughs> Important difference. <laughs> Bet your sweet Bibby. <laughs> now, I, I was a whole lot more offended by his uh, column than I was by what the bookstores did, for two reasons. Number one. I thought, this guy, while he's definitely going to have an opinion on this, it's kind of a, I'd have to call it like a conflict of interest. You know, he's a little too close to the topic. And the other thing is, this is CNN, all right? If you want religious news, you don't look to CNN. And, and specifically, more than religious news, if you want doctrinal statements, I mean, this guy is interpreting the Bible. He's, you know, he says, uh, Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. Uh, no, I, I lost it. Um, I've heard Brooke Collins pastor, the Reverend Dr. Ralph Douglas West Sr. preach several sermons stating that what Paul wrote in Second Timothy, the regards to only men preaching was specific to that church and not a blanket man. Second, there are instances where Paul wrote that his views were his own and not mandates from God. This was not one of those instances. Yeah. That is a doctrinal fight that any of us can have any time, and I love it how these same Bible thumpers ignore the Bible story of Deborah, who was a judge in the Old Testament and was over men. And was not a pastor. That's right. Uh, and, uh, you know, and yes, he's absolutely right. There are times when Paul says that this is my opinion, not necessarily God's opinion, um, but he doesn't say that in Second Timothy. And, um, you know, so that's, um, <clears throat> you can't really buy that argument there. I'm, at least he gives Paul credit for writing Timothy. I thought it was going to be his next argument saying that most, you know, all these scholars say they didn't write it. Yeah. So, you know, this, uh, I, I was just thinking this is, you know, people are going to see this and say, ah, liberal bias, you know, in this case, theologically liberal bias. Well, in his case, both because it says right at the top that, He's uh, he's planning on voting for Obama, which I have to credit because, you know, I've always said that I think that every uh, politi- or every uh, news reporter should have a little D or R after their name <laughs> when they're reporting because everybody's got a bias, you know. Right. Well, I, I, and by the way, just because he's in favor now, I don't know about the, the you know, the Obama part, but just because he's... Um, in favor of women's ordination doesn't mean he's necessarily theologically liberal. Um, you know, there are the evangelical feminists out there. Uh, I went to, um, you know, I did my doctorate with them at uh, Gordon Conwell. That was uh, as a heartbeat of evangelical feminism uh, and egalitarian, egalitarian views of scripture. Um, and I thought they had a lot to say, but they were not theologically liberal. Uh, you know, they were just, you know, just as conservative uh, hermeneutically as you or I would be. The Bible is the inerrant and the infallible word of God. Tim and Paul did write these books of Tim and Paul. Um, you know, they, 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 you know, like Bill Hybels uh, would be a person who is, you know, theologically conservative um, in his hermeneutical and other stances and be a good evangelical. But also believes women should be ordained. Gordon Fee is another one. Yeah, but just from this guy's comments, I think he's theologically liberal. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know if I quite think it's, I mean, he, she's talking about, you know, leading people to the Lord. 
Uh, that's not a theologically liberal. Um, you know, okay, he's theologically moderate. Because you're right. Yeah. You're right. Theological liberals are not, you know, tend to also be universalists. Right. Uh, you know, and there's some other things here. Um, you know, he, he could be. I think he just really, I think, I, to me, I just got the idea that, you know, this was more of a rant. This really ticked him off that uh, they would make this kind of a, a call. And, you know, that as far as he's concerned, it just makes the, the church look stupid. And so um, that, that I think that really kind of got after him. But, yeah, there, he's, probably, he's probably part of that more theologically moderate section of the Southern Baptist Convention uh, that exists. Um, so, um yeah, um, what the, the what the what the fact that he's going to vote for uh, Obama has to do with it? Uh, I was talking about liberal. To say there. But I, yeah, you know, I know, but I don't know why they even put that at the beginning of the article. I haven't figured out how that has to do with deal with the rest of his topic there. Yeah. Unless he's planning on going to Jeremiah Wright's church. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, then, then it might be, you know, I think we had a bad influence on her. Somehow or another. Um, uh, germane to 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 the to the article, but um, otherwise it's not. Hey, speaking of things that have been banned, let's talk about Google. I'm just coming up with a segue tonight, people. I'll tell you, I'm, he's on a roll. Must be that hundredth episode thing. Yes, hundredth episode thing. Um, and now for something completely different. And you know, the funny part to me was that. Um, I don't know about you. I mean, I use Google all the time, and I completely ignore the ads. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. I, yeah, although well, I put I, Google ads on our website, though. <laughs> it, 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 we don't make very much off of it, but, uh, you know, hopefully enough just to kind of cover the overhead. So, and it right, You've got all kinds of close. interesting ads on there. I, I like looking at it when the, when the Muslim single ads pop up there. You know? <laughs> get a lot of those. <laughs> Those are my personal favorites. Do you click them? I want, you know, what? Do you click them? I always want to put my name in as, you know, Ahmed, you know. <laughs> A, C, Flem, M, you know. All right, anyway, back to Google. Have you, have you seen Ahmed, the, the dead terrorist? No. No, no okay. You need to do a, a go on Google video. I look up Jeff Durnham Ahmed, and you'll have, uh, he's a ventriloquist, and he has Ahmed the Dead Terrorist. <laughs> he's just oh, quiet. wait. Yeah, I have seen that. I kill you. <laughs> no, it's, just, it's just a riot. Anyway, back to Google. Um, over in um, Britain, they had um, uh, said that they would not allow um, uh, this group in this Christian organization to put up the one of their little things there, sponsored things there, on uh, uh, keep views and news on abortion law from the Christian Institute, uh, because um, Google said, um, you know, they had a policy of not accepting ads that contain abortion and religion-related content. Except they did have um, ads, if you did a search on abortion, for pro-abortion stuff, uh, near all and... Um, Planned Parenthood and all that kind of stuff. Well, if you look at the ad, that if you look at the ones that's, that, that that are um, behind me, just underneath it in the picture, it says uh, abortion help centers across the UK. One visit only. No waiting. Well, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so they're saying, hey, this isn't, this isn't right. Yeah, and they have also had plenty of religion-related content, too. I mean, all you have to do is look at our site, and you'll see all the religious um, ads. Yeah, but this is Google UK, so this isn't necessarily Google America. True. Google America, I remember reading, um, this was years ago, I don't know if it's changed since then, but um, they wouldn't allow the NRA to um, to do ads because they have a policy against, like, any kind of pro-weapon kind of thing. So, I don't know if that's still true or not. You homo sapiens and your guts. I don't know if it's, yeah, I, I, 
don't know, but uh, you'll face evil and you will defeat it. Anyway, so uh, you know, after uh, that, so this Christian Institute, Institute filed uh, filed suit. I'm glad to see that the Brits have learned from the Americans. You know, uh, sue first, ask questions <laughs> later, and uh, and keeping their trial lawyers busy like ours. And they 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 had a uh, and they reached an out of court settlement. And Google said, yeah, we can go ahead and let this go. And it says, um, you know, um, we decided to amend our policy, creating a level playing field and enabling religious associations to place ads on abortion in a factual way. Oh, goody! It just seemed logical to me. If you got to allow both sides. Wow. You know, especially if you're Google. Yeah. It, they've got like what sixty seventy percent of the market share, right? So you know it's just not a good it's not a good business decision to only allow one side uh, when it comes to um, any particular issue. You know, boy, talk about that. You know, because they said it's uh, it's it's uh, concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. Nah, you can't find it. Um, it's an emotive subject. Google does not take a particular side. Well, yeah, it is an emotive subject, so don't take a particular side. They had been. But um, so now they're saying, okay, we're not going to take a particular side anymore. You know, good plan, good business decision, because otherwise, can you say boycott? Of course... I'm trying to think what else is out there that's as good <laughs> and would they really care about a boycott because people would go yeah I'm boycotting it but it's like in Firefox and Safari's uh, search bar and man it's such a great search engine so do I really want to use MSN or Yahoo or Ask or something like that so yeah you know people are going to keep using Google and, but it's it's good to see that they're not trying to take one side or the other, at least not on this issue. You know, their their whole policy. Their um, this was this was in the news a little while back. Um, see, Google's company motto is "Don't be evil." And uh, there was an article, oh, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe a year ago, um, where they they said, "Okay, just so you know," because people were asking them about like Google China. Uh, fil filters according to the Chinese government's preferences and stuff like that. And they said, well, you know, that don't be evil thing, that's a guideline. It's not a, um, it's, it's not a company policy per se. <laughs> so, you know, they can be evil if they want to. <laughs> it's, they just try to avoid it when possible. You're quasi evil. You're semi evil. You're the margarine of evil. Oh, glad they came up to something that's a little bit kind of basic. Okay, uh, speaking of evil, right there, Tony okay. Alamo. I was going to say, speaking of Google, because YouTube is, is Google, but that's fine. We'll end with the, the YouTube one. Yeah, Tony Alamo. Yeah, e evil's a pretty good word, huh? Um, I meant that th this group cake's been running around for so long. And uh, 74 years old now. Um, so that's not a recent picture. Him a recent picture. No, I don't think it is. I don't know. I mean, the other picture was on the the, the site. I mean, you know, it's called dyeing your hair. <laughs> um, but uh, he, um, you know, he he had um, tax problems and wound up in jail for uh, many years and come back and. You know, kind of got things going again with Alamo Christian Center. And uh, now he got into trouble, uh, and there was a raid on his thing last week for uh, for child pornography and other interesting, fun little things like that. But then in, in, the, in, the, in, in the, you know, midst of his denial and defiance, uh, he says, well, there is a mandate from the Bible for young girls to marry. In the Bible it happened the girls today. I don't marry them if they want to at 14, 15 years old, because we don't do it. 
even though I believe it's okay. Um, and then he said, he said that for girls having sex, consent is puberty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you can see why we use the word evil to describe him. Yeah. Uh, um, there is evil there that does not sleep. The, the consent is puberty. So, like, if she says no, sorry, you've gone through puberty, so... <laughs> That's, I think he, they mean the age of consent. That uh, that that's when you're a girl's old enough to 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 agree to marry. Uh, people who have left Alamo's organization say they have witnessed older men marrying girls who have just reached puberty. So um, you know, in um, Massachusetts, um, you know the the difference between um, uh, if a if a young woman is age 16, she can consent to sexual relations. You know, it's not considered um, statutory rape then. 16, huh? What? 16. 16. Yeah. Uh, your boyfriend, 19 or 16. You know, like, you know um, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying I, I understand how they made that determination for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, because you're, you're dealing with what's the definition of statutory rape, or what what age, you know, can could she say yes, I I, I agree to this, um, you know, and so I understand where Massachusetts is coming from. I disagree with it, but I understand where they're coming from. Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah. You know, but uh, come back. But he's saying age consent should be puberty. So he's saying age consent should be third, twelve, mm. you know, eight, even as young as ten. Sure. You know, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old should be age of consent. Um, uh, and that just, that makes no sense at all. That's just sick. In his case, of course, because he wants to be, you know, somewhat traditional, uh, so you can't have a sexual relationship outside of marriage, so 12, 13 is okay to marry. Yeah. Well, you know, see, you have to understand that he has special insight because he was born Jew. Not that he ever believed in Judaism, but... Um, when he says that he's a completed Jew, <laughs> he says, we wrote the Bible. I don't want these stinking Gentiles in Rome telling me what it says. They don't know. <laughs> so he's not like, you know, racist and well, apparently missed that whole, well, there's no, neither not. Jew nor Greek. <laughs> but you see, you got to remember, he claims the White House is in league with the Vatican, which he says also controls the United Nations. Yeah. Yeah, the Vatican controls the United Nations. That's why UNICEF, you know, Halloween's coming up, and you have kids going around collecting money for UNICEF, mm -hmm. which is run by the United Nations. And UNICEF, um, part of their uh, practices is to help uh, young women get abortions. Yeah, that was a Vatican decision. Yeah. You see, you know, we're all going to be wearing the little red hats. That you know the Pope wears, he's going to be you know shipping them to, to to the United Nations sooner or later. Those little Saturn hats that <laughs> you have on. <laughs> Yippee ki <-yay. laughs> You know, oh man, we're just gonna, we're we're going to hear from the Catholics again. Uh, look, guys, you know we're we're we're, we're joking him a little bit, but at least um um. You know, at least we don't think the Vatican is trying to control, you know, the United Nations. I love the, I love the, uh, um, the last thing of here. He says, um, you must think I'm very stupid after 44 years of this stuff. Mm, given those conspiracy theories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We think he's pretty stupid. <laughs> uh, this is, I mean, this guy's fascinating. Oh, and then he's he's thrilled about all this because it, it um their uh, website traffic has grown more than tenfold, more than a million hits since the raid, daily. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And he says, "I'm I, I they're really making me famous. They're making us famous. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, dude, that's not the kind of fame you want for a church." <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. 
you know, what is this guy all about? I mean, is is he all about, you know, proclaiming Christ and letting people know about God's love? If he is, he's not excited about people finding out about his church or checking out his church because they want to know about this pedophile. Disgusting. I, I can't imagine that he's going to gain a lot of members through this kind of exposure. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. So. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, this guy like him remind me of, um, uh, that verse, and I know I've gone through it, I've done this thing before in the, in the Old Testament, I can't remember where it is. Yeah, you know, my name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff. You just shake your head and you look like, you know, you feel bad for the people who get sucked into this because this is a cultic thing. Mm-hmm. So, oh well, it's kind of sad. Speaking of sad. <laughs> Speaking of God's name blasphemed among the Gentiles. <laughs> okay. and, and you're going to see the, the video that's associated with this. Uh, as the credits roll here at the end of the show, um, because we discovered that when we showed the video during the thing, um, my, my audio dies right after that, and it's about three minutes and thirty seconds. So I don't, we don't want to sit here for the whole thing and, and do it. But uh, yeah, we'll stick it at the little, end. Uh, 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 somebody had a little fun here with Jack and Impy, um, who's I don't know. Well, from my perspective, a little bit strange himself, but. Partly because he's a, um, you know, Israel first millennialist and everything, but, uh, and, um, which probably isn't, I don't know, I disagree with it theologically, but he, he goes to the next step and starts, you know, trying to basically say have revelations tomorrow, today's newspaper, um, and goes a little bit stuff. But, uh, he's got this, um, little, um, video and he said, um, that he just couldn't understand these churches that have these rock bands and uh they're not even churches anymore they don't because they don't sing hymns and like the old rugged cross and 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 these this rock music has and this rap has all these vile terrible words in it yeah and so then he says do you believe that there will be music in hell if there is it'll be rock and roll and rap <laughs> now i mean He's right. A lot of rock music gets a lot of rap is vile. I mean, it's it's misogynic. It is, um, you know, talking about women is, 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 is it's really almost anti-black the way it even you know the the language used and the way it talks about people. I mean, he's absolutely right about that. I'll, I'll agree with him that it's vile. A lot of it's very but jack. The church music used in, you know, the mega churches with praise band is not like that. Mm-hmm. One Obviously. is not like the other. You know, Cademan's call is not two pack. Okay, let's get it, let's get it straight here. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is where you you, you associate the um, the lyrics with the genre automatically. All right. You know, and. No, there's there's Christian rock out there. There's Christian rap out there, you know, and a lot of it's not real great, and a lot of it I disagree with the theology in it, but there's some good stuff out there too. There's some great parody. Um, if you've ever, um, don't know if you ever heard of apologetics. Nope. Um, well, they do. Uh, they do a takeoff on Eminem's uh, uh, real Slim Shady called the Real. Real Sin Savior. Um, and speaking of uh, Mecca Manga Bible Stories and the one with uh, uh, um, David and Goliath, um, they do a great riff on Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody telling the story of David and Goliath. Oh, really? <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'll have to look for that on YouTube. Somebody probably put a video uh, on there. I don't there. know if they're on there, but um, I, I, I have the song. I can always... Um, 
send it to you some night. Sometimes we listen to, but it's a great it's a great takeoff. It's a great parody. So you know there there is now and again we're not going to as we talked about earlier with, with, with the manga we're not going to reach everybody the same way. Um, a lot of the people who attend these churches that have praise bands go there because they don't like traditional hymnody. Mm-hmm. I mean, my sister mm-hmm. goes to a, an evangelical uh, um, Quaker congregation uh, because you know she does not like you know traditional liturgy. She does not like traditional hymnody. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just visiting some of our members. Uh, tonight, who are um, they're snowbirds? Don't like traditional liturgy. Don't like traditional. Uh, uh, well, actually, they do. <laughs> but uh, you know, they go down to Florida for the winter, and uh, the church that they attend down there has two services. One is traditional, and one is not. And uh, they attend the traditional one, but um, they said, you know, a lot of people go to the to that other one, and uh, so they said. You know, these are people that they don't like hymns. And so, um, you know, they're, they're looking for something different. You know, they still want to hear the gospel, you know. And, um, and, and you know, there is a lot of great, you know, sound theological stuff out there. Now, I was actually having this discussion on, uh, on one of the email lists uh, this uh, just over the past couple of days, one of the email lists that I run, um, and uh, some of our listeners are familiar with LPT, and uh, there was a discussion on this, and uh, talking about the fact that uh, you're, you know, people don't necessarily choose a particular church based on what kind of music is there, um, and also the fact that a lot of the Christian music that's out there is not very good. The other thing is, a lot of the things that we in the church call contemporary are not contemporary. You know, I mean, we're talking, you know, a lot of stuff. You're talking 50 years old, and we're calling it contemporary, you know. Uh, not 50 years old. Uh, 30, back in the 70s. Um, no, I was actually I know, looking. We're coming back from 58. Okay, I was looking through our hymnal, and there was, let's see, Jesus' name above all names. A lot of people consider that contemporary. I don't remember the, the years on this. It might be from the 60s, but, um, and, ah, um, oh, now I'm drawing a blank. But some of those, I mean, they're folk songs. Um, and, right. And, and, you know, and that's the other thing. Can you really call folk contemporary? You know, folk is a, is a genre that's... We Peter, uh, Paul, and Mary fans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's real contemporary there, Jim. Jim used to hey, ride his I dinosaur to Peter, years. Paul, and Mary <laughs> concerts. I've never seen them in concert. But if you want to send me, I'd be glad to go. But anyway, back to our... our, our, our um, well, you know, the I was going to say about uh, uh, you know, that, that discussion. It uh, well, they're, they're absolutely right. A lot of contemporary Christian music is very bad. A lot of traditional hymn, hymnody is very bad. Yep. Uh, yep. You know, as a um, you know, we in 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 in, in hymnody and contemporary Christian music, Sturgeon's Law still applies. You know. I have no idea what that meant. And you do remember Sturgeon's Law. Ninety percent of this is crap, but then ninety percent of everything is crap. So I mean, that's the law, and it's it's true. Um, and uh, you know, so you really do have to kind of look through to find the, you know, separate the good for the bad. But what I think a lot of our guys forget is that because uh, they go like, you know, there is no such thing as a secret. There is no such thing. You talk about secret service, that's stupid, you know, because we're, we're we're rebellious against God. That's true, but. The Lutheran Confessions distinctly say that though we cannot choose to believe in God, we can choose to attend worship. We can choose to hear the word. Mm-hmm. Those are mm-hmm. the things that are within our realm to choose. Yeah, and so if a person is curious, what 
what does the Christian church teach? What does, uh, you know, our Lutheran church or whatever, you know, what, what do they teach? What are they all about? You know, I've heard stuff and I'm curious what they're about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they come to find out what we're about. They hear the gospel and they go, oh, oh. Right. Or one, one guy, um, uh, in front of my church and, um, you know, they're, they are very contemporary. And, uh, there's a bad, you know, did an infant baptism. And, um, you know, one of the family members came and came back the next, you know, with, never went to church except, when, you know, unless there was a baptism or something, he had to. Came back the next week because he was, he enjoyed hearing this band. So, uh, he continued to come to worship then because of, you know, the band. And heard the word and came to faith. So, different people get touched, you know, touched by different things. You know, the other thing, the other message for Jack is that rock and roll and rap are not the only um, genres out there with offensive lyrics. Now, rap has probably um, won the contest for most offensive um, if you just take, you know, a handful of their songs or or maybe even a, like a particular subset of rap, um, like gangster rap. And... Um, but at the same time, you know, there's there's plenty of rap out there that's really not that bad. Um, that's that's pretty clean overall, and um, you know, and there's lots of rock and roll out there that's that's family friendly, and you know, and even, I, um, but you, you know, you look at at some other uh, genres. Take a look at country music. All right, country music, you know, it's is known first of all for its divorce songs. You know, so much so that it's a stereotype. And I, I certainly wouldn't call divorce a, a pro-Christian topic. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, you listen to, to modern country songs and there's all kinds of, of stuff in there that would be, uh, contrary to the Bible and, and immoral and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and that's that's one genre. You look at, you know, even even classical music. Uh, you know, there are when you look at the setting of some of the the songs in classical music. You know, people like to play um, uh, Wagner at weddings, and um, and Wagner was very anti-Christian, right? But somehow his music is okay to play in the church. Um, you know, or for that matter, here comes the bride, you know, which was not in, ever intended to be used in a real wedding. Um, right. But there's a, there's a, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of music you can point to and say, you know, this, this, this isn't really good stuff either. Um, like I said, surgeon law always applies. Um, but I think he's picking one sort, one type of music, and I think he's just kind of making a, um, going the wrong direction with his, 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 his thoughts there. And, uh, although, I don't know. Okay. I mean, my son listens to rap. I, I think he might be right. <laughs> if there is music in hell, it may be rap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, um, no! I can't think of anything else to force people to listen to for all eternity that would cause more suffering. Oh, I can. Than, than, than oh, that. I can. Easy listening. You know that where they take popular songs. You know, elevator music. Oh, oh, elevator Muzak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in um, in the in the video game Earthworm Jim, there is one of the levels. Uh, he actually finds himself on this planet and the name of the level is what the heck. And he's on the planet heck and it's a, it's a hellish planet. The background music, it starts out playing uh night on bald mountain. And then all of a sudden you hear this record scratch and all of a sudden it's playing music. <laughs> And, and then you hear like the screams of the condemned, you know, um, in the midst of this music. And I was like, "Oh, how perfect!" I could think of no better music for hell. Oh man, my mom used to make me listen to that stuff. 
She'd be, I'd be listening to like Billy Joel and, and, and she'd go, turn off that noise. And then she'd turn on her, her easy listening uh, station and they would be playing the exact same song, but you know, remade. And it was just like, duh. <laughs> No, I um. Now a couple of weeks ago, when uh, I I was preaching and I was preaching on the Romans 14 passage, and Paul was talking about be tolerant and uh, differences and you know things, and I talked about the diversity that some of us like country music and some of us like rock and some of us like classical and some of us like rap. God help them. Uh, <laughs> Do not do that when I'm drinking. Boy, no control. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, I gave my opinion of rap and the congregation to the cracked up laughing when I did it. <laughs> yeah, I see, there, yeah, there's another list where uh, Dale participates on a run about preaching and uh, they, I participate on that one I don't run it okay they, they 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 didn't like the fact that we were talking about um uh you know they they were they were talking about humor and it wasn't a good thing I just kept my mouth shut because I'm like if I didn't if I wasn't didn't do humor in sermons I don't know what I'd do oh well hey that was the hundredth episode Dale Wow, how anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> Tune Sorry. in next time when Dale says. <laughs> All right. I do have an announcement. Um, and this is this story's already up at our site. Um, but I want to let people know about it that um, that listen or watch the show and, and don't go to our site. And that is I've set up a new uh, service. This uses the Twitter microblogging service. You can check it out at twitter.com if you're not familiar with it. And what I've done is there's um, there's a, a site called the Group Tweet and um, that allows to do this. It's, I didn't come up with this technology on my own. Um, basically, the way it works is you um, you set up a Twitter account and you then uh, follow uh, these two different groups. And, and one of them is called Praying Voices and the other one is called Bible Talk. All right. And you can find them at twitter.com slash praying voices and all one word and twitter.com slash Bible Talk all, also all one word. And, um, and, and the idea here is that uh, with Praying Voices, uh, you send a private message. And in Twitter, the way you do that is you type D space and then um, praying voices and then your message. And so you send this message to that account. And then it will send, it will pass on that message to everybody that's following it. And so what you do is if you have a prayer request, something for yourself, some, somebody you know, whatever, you send it to this account and then everybody that's following that will receive that prayer request. And the idea is if you're participating in this, you, when you, when these requests come through, you just take a moment and say a prayer for that person. And so the idea is that we get enough people doing this. You put out a prayer request. You've got people all over the world praying for you. And, um, and and it's also i think a great thing for christians that um to remind us you know paul said to pray without ceasing and you know this is just a great reminder to be in prayer you know sometimes i get busy with just doing you know work and uh, you know i i don't pray nearly as much as as i would like to just because i get distracted and this is a great reminder hey stop and pray you know and um and the idea is that these come through throughout the day. And, you know, if you miss some because you're, you're busy doing something and you're not uh, Twitter, you can get either using the, uh, the Twitter website or there's a bunch of different programs for all different platforms you can use. Uh, you can even get uh, text messages on your cell phone. And so, you know, imagine 
the prayer requests come through as text messages, you just stop and pray. Um, or, you know, when you get a chance to check it, you can pray. Um, the other one is called Bible Talk, and the idea with that one is uh, it's similar. You know, it's set up the same way. You send a message, and it goes out to the whole group. And um, and the idea is that, okay, if you're reading the Bible or thinking about a Bible passage or something like that, you have a question about it, um, or you just want people's opinions about it, or um, or you just you know came across something, you'd never noticed it before, and say, hey, this is really cool, or, or whatever, and um, and you put it out there. And then, you know, other people can respond to it and say, um, uh, you know, well, here's what I think it means or, um, or, uh, you know, or, or whatever. And again, the idea is to, for people to be thinking about God, thinking about the Bible, thinking about what he has to say to us throughout their day. And, um, so, you know, there's, there's a few people that have already uh, started following it. There's not much conversation going on in either one of them yet. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd like to get the word out about these. Uh, feel free to go to our website, find the story on this, and, and I'll put a link to it in the show notes too. And then, and, and pass it on. You can use the uh, email this page or email this story to somebody or, or you know, you can just use your browser's uh, uh, thing to send the link or, or whatever. And so, you know, I'd love to, to be able to get the word about, about this. And this is not a Lutheran thing. I would say it's a Christian thing, but non-Christians are welcome to, you know, follow it and, and get involved as well. Um, and, but, you know, there's definitely going to be a, a Christian slant to it. Um, now, I, the, the Bible talk thing is, is an experiment, um, you know, especially more so than the other one in that, uh, you know, a lot of times you get a lot of Christians from different backgrounds and you start talking about the Bible, you know, you're going to have disagreements, right? Um, and I expect there to be disagreements. That's okay, because that's how we as a church grow, is by discussing these things. Um, what I do want is for the Christians to be able to discuss these things in a loving way and, um, you know, and not get uh, arrogant, not get... Um, you know, start flame wars and stuff like that because Twitter posts are limited to 140 characters a piece because that's the limit for an SMS message, um, to a phone. Um, I'm hoping that that'll help, uh, to prevent big rants because it's really hard to do a 140 character rant of any, you know, significance. And, uh, you know, so the idea is to just share ideas. And, uh, you know, tell people what you think or, or whatever. And, and, um, just to get Christians talking to each other, uh, about what God has to say to us. So, um, so yeah, we'll put a link to that in the show notes and I'd really like to encourage people to check it out and give it a try and, and see what you think. And, you know, just keep in mind that we're just getting this started. I haven't done a lot of sort of publicizing of it or anything yet. Um, and so, you know, it's going to take a little while to, to build up steam. And so be patient but definitely get involved and you know, the best way to, to get it going is to participate. And, uh, so, and if anybody has questions about, you know, what Twitter is or anything like that, uh, feel free to send us a, a message. I'll be happy to, to help you out with that. And, um, which leads to, uh, the rest of this. And that is, we'd love to hear back from you on any of the stuff that we talked about tonight. Um, your favorite memories of, of CrossFeed, your favorite episodes or, you know, something that Jim said to really offend you. <laughs> you can also, speaking of Twitter, um, oh, you can email us at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Um, and, uh, or you can follow me on Twitter at, uh, CrossFeed News is my Twitter name. And, um, and also a reminder that, if you see any interesting uh, religious news stories out there, post them to crossfeednews.com. Uh, the idea is it's a user-generated site. You see stuff, post a link. If um, you know if 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 there's uh, if it, if it's a story that you saw while you're um, surfing, you know you can use the web link. Or if something happened and um, and it's not it hasn't been covered anywhere, hey, post the story. You know, write it up because it might end up. You know, and that's the other thing is you post a story, we might end up discussing it on our show. And um, while ge we generally choose the most popular stories of the week, that's not always the case. 
Um, a lot of times it's the most interesting stories. Um, sometimes there's a real popular story, but it just wouldn't make for a good discussion. Um, and so we skip that one. And I uh, definitely, you know, when there's, uh, user submitted stories, if, you know, if, if, if I think that, that we could discuss this on the show, I like to discuss them just to encourage people to post stuff. So yeah, post something up there and see what happens. Well, kids, that's enough for one night, eh? Well, we can see that my background has degraded. Some, something happened. It just fell apart, and I don't feel like resetting it. So, um, but, uh, so you can see the wallpaper in my living room behind me. So, you know, that's, that's actually my dining room. Hey, but this is about our 100th episode. We thank you all for sticking with us so far and uh, continue to pray God's blessings on our reader, uh, our listeners and our, uh, those who read and post and all sorts of other things. Take care and have a good night. Good night, everybody. God bless.